get connected to has everything to do with how and how much you increase. Internationally recognized for teaching and preaching the uncompromised Word of God, Bishop Clarence E. McClendon answers the prophetic and apostolic call upon his life by ministering the healing grace and miracle anointing of Jesus Christ around the world. By his preaching and teaching the uncompromised gospel of Jesus Christ, Bishop McClendon the teacher, the preacher, the apostle, and an anointed prophet sent to the nations, being used by the power of the Holy Spirit, has led to the healing and deliverance of millions around the world during his healing crusades and conferences. If you want to experience another level of worship, witness the healing power of Jesus, learn the uncompromised Word of God, confirmed by notable miracles, then we invite you to partake in the overwhelming power of the Holy Spirit by the moving of God's transforming grace. We've been teaching from this area and we've been talking about the Spirit and the anointing of increase and we, we said a couple of things about this from the way that it is worded here. And one of the things that we said is that increase is a spirit and it is an anointing. Notice, it doesn't say, may the Lord increase you. It says, may the Lord give you increase. So it's not just an incident or a happening. It is a spirit and it is anointed. Now, once again, when we say it is a spirit, the spirit of increase, we're not talking about a little angel on your shoulder tapping you with a golden wand and causing things to increase in your life. We're talking about, uh, again, this word spirit is being used here in the same context as it is used in 2 Corinthians 4, 13, where the Bible talks about the spirit of faith. It says, and because we have the same spirit of faith, small s, the same spirit of faith according to what is written. I believe and therefore have I spoken. We also believe and therefore speak. Here the word spirit is not a reference to an angel or a deity, but it is a reference to a vital principle and a mental disposition. The word spirit there means vital principle and mental disposition. So watch this. May the Lord give you the vital principle of increase. May the Lord give you the mental disposition of increase. The Lord is going to give you the vital principles and the mental disposition of increase more and more. I need you to understand this. If you are a blood-bought, born-again, spirit-filled, child of God, you are to be increasing always, all the time. You are an agent of increase. Whatever gets near you should increase. Whatever you get near should increase. Now this is not magic. There are principles here. There is a mental disposition. And one of the things we said, are you still here? Yeah. One of the things we've already said is that it has a, the increase has vital principles, it has a mental disposition, and there's an anointing. Now what does that mean? It says, may the Lord do it. And what the anointing does, the anointing is when God gets involved that causes you and I to get greater results than just the principles. Do you understand what I just said? to get greater results than just the principle. Again, the supernatural is God's super moving on our natural. We do something in the natural realm, but God, because we're doing it at his word and because we're doing it at his direction, he puts something extra on it and it works on another level and another dimension. Now, if you're a child of God, you have to believe that. You are expected to believe God to get involved in that thing. Touch your neighbor and say, God is involved in it. Look at your other neighbor and tell them, and you 
by exercising his principle, you keep him involved in it. Yeah. See, see, you and I do it. Now, go real quickly to Luke chapter 5. I got to hurry with this. Luke chapter 5, because that gets me to the next, if you will, dimension of what the Lord wants me woo, to get to you. And, 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 and what he wants me to get to you, start getting you today, and I'll probably need next week as well to do it, is so significant. It's one of these principles of increase that we overlook in the body of Christ. We overlook it in part because we take certain things for granted. And then we overlook it at other times because we just tend to forget it. But it is a principle in God's Word. And when you see the principle, then you understand not only how it works, but why it works. Are you still here? See, a part of my assignment in the apostolic and the prophetic realm of instruction is to demystify God and his word for people. God does not want to be mysterious. He wants his people to know who he is and how he does what he does because you're supposed to be doing it in the earth. Come on, say amen to this. And to take the mystery out of it so that you understand the principles and you work them. I'm tired of people uh, experiencing a religion that they treat like magic. This is not religion. This is a relationship with a living God who through his son Jesus not only reconciled us to himself but put us in position. Watch this to know the mysteries that work his kingdom. I'll get to that. I'm ahead of myself. So, Luke chapter 5. You still here? I read this to you. We went over this, so I'm not going to go over the whole thing, but I will very quickly get us to the point and make commentary on the things we've articulated because we talked about here positioning uh, ourselves for miraculous increase. Nudge your neighbor and remind them you are positioned for miraculous increase. Say, say not just regular stuff. Miraculous stuff. Supernatural stuff. Now, now, now Bishop, what, what do you mean by supernatural? I mean what should take a, a, a year takes a week for you. I, I mean that your business begins to prosper because you put God's principles in and when they say it's going to take you three years to turn a profit, you look at them and say, no, 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 I'll have a profit in six months right here. Yeah. Grab your neighbor's hand and tell them you are not regular. Yeah. Come on, squeeze it real tight. Tell them you are not normal. And you are not to be getting normal results. See, see. Okay, all right. So, so watch this. So it was, verse 1, Luke 5. So it was, as the multitude pressed about him to hear the word of God. What were they hearing? The word of God. What comes when you hear the word of God? Faith. Okay, so, so faith was coming. So to hear the word of God. He stood by Lake Gennesaret and saw two boats standing by the lake. But the fishermen had gone from them and were washing their nets. Then he got into, the, into one of the boats, which was Simon's, and asked him to put out a little from the land. And he sat down and taught the multitudes from the boat. Now, one of the things we said was that fishing was Simon Peter's business. So when Simon Peter gives his boat to Jesus so that Jesus can preach the word, Simon Peter has just given Jesus resource from his business. It's Simon's boat. It's not Jesus' boat. It's Simon's boat. And Simon Peter gives Jesus his boat for the purpose. Everybody say, for the purpose. For the purpose, for the purpose of the preaching of the word. Now, why is that important? Because whenever you help the preaching of the word of God to go forth, there is a benefit coming back to you because God does everything he does in the earth by his word. 
Are you still here? So Peter has just sown into Jesus' ministry. Do you see that? Look at verse 4. When Jesus stops speaking, now what do we have? We got two things. Woo, Jesus. We got two things in operation here. We got faith, which has come by hearing, and a seed, which has come by sowing. And any time you get faith and a seed together, something supernatural is destined to happen. Are you still in the building? When he stopped speaking, he said to Simon, launch out into the deep. And let down your nets for the catch. We talked about this. Jesus says nets, plural. But Simon answered and said to him, Master, we have toiled all night and caught nothing. Remember, toil has to do, the word toil has to do with working or laboring under the curse. The first time the word toil is ever spoken of, it's, it's talked about under the curse. So he says, we've toiled all night and caught nothing. Nevertheless, at your word, I will let down the net. Everybody say net. net. Remember, Jesus said nets. Peter only took down a net. I preached on that, not going back. And when they had done this, they caught a great number of fish. Watch this. Here's what we want. And their net was breaking. So they signaled to their partners in the other boat to come and help. Everybody say, they signaled to their partners. Say it again. Say it again. Say it again. Watch this. So they signaled to their partners in the other boat to come and help them. And they came and filled both boats. So how many boats were there? Two. Which boat, had both boats sown seed? I said, had both boats sown seed? But they filled two boats. But the seed was only from one boat. Okay. So they signaled to their partners in the other boat to come and help them. And they came and filled both boats so that they began to sink. When Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus' feet or Jesus' knees saying, Depart from me, for I am a sinful man, O Lord. Once again, I want to point out that it is the blessing, it is the goodness, it is the increase that God gives to Peter that causes him to repent. He doesn't repent before God is good to him. God is good to him, and then he repents. That's why God wants you blessed, and that's why God wants you to be a blessing, and that's why God wants the blessing to be released, because when you can bless people before they know God, they'll want to get to know God. This is why the church, this is why the body of Christ is to be blessing humanity, not just to feed people. God wants people to see that he is so good that before they know who he is, he blesses them. Come on, say amen to this. It's not what I'm preaching, but it's good. And it needs to be known. Watch this. Look, once again, let me read 7 through 9. So they signaled to their partners in the other boat to come and help them, and they came and filled both boats. So that they began to sink. When Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus' feet, saying, Depart from me, for I'm a sinful man, O Lord. For, everybody say, for he, for he. and all who were with him. Oh. Say it again. For he, for he. and all who were with him. Oh. Say it again. For he, for he. and all who were with him oh. were astonished oh. at the catch oh. of fish which they had taken. Now here's the point. Who sowed the seed? Huh? I said who? Simon Peter sowed the seed. But who got the increase? No, not everybody. No, not everybody. Who got the increase? Him and everybody who was with him. So now we're unlocking another key of supernatural increase. It is increase by association. No, you didn't get what I just said. Increase by association. Who you hook up with, who you get connected to, has everything to do with how and how much yeah. 
you increase. Lay your hand on your brother, lay your hand on your sister and tell them increase, increase. by association. By association. Say, it, increase Say it increase by association, by association. is one of the kingdom keys, the kingdom keys. to supernatural, supernatural. Increase. increase. Go to Proverbs 13, 20. Quick, quick increase by association, meaning Peter's partners didn't sow the seed. Peter sowed the seed. But all who were connected to Peter got blessed because Peter believed and acted on the word. Grab your neighbor's hand, squeeze it tight, tell him it only takes one in the house, only takes one. So he said, you don't have to have everybody in your house serving God, only takes one. If one person will really begin to put the thing to work, the blessing will begin to come on the whole house and people will start asking, what are you doing? And before you know it, they'll be coming to get the word with you. Lay your hand on yourself and say, self, this is why God wants to increase you because everybody connected to you is going to get some of this. Watch it. Watch it. Proverbs 13, 20. What does it say? He who walks with wise men will be wise. But the companion of fools will be destroyed. Who you hang out with has to do with what happens to you. He said, if you walk with wise men, guess what's going to happen? You're going to get wise. He said, if you hang out with fools, guess what's going to happen? You're going to get destroyed because fools get destroyed. Still here? I said, are you still here? Watch. Go to 1 Corinthians 15, verse 33, quick. 1 Corinthians 15 and verse 33. Watch this. Do not be deceived. Don't be fooled. Evil company corrupts good habits. Oh, God. This is written to Christians. He said, don't fool yourself. If you hang out with people who don't believe the word, who don't have faith, who don't trust the word of God, that's going to begin to affect your behavior. You Christian you. You new creation you. You will start functioning in all creation ways. Are you still here? The New King James says evil company. The King James Version says evil communication. And that is the key because whoever you hang out with, you listen to. A lot of people's blessings a lot of people's increase, my God, has been interrupted because they disconnected to where their inspiration and revelation was coming from and then they connected with people who weren't speaking the word, talking the word, believing the word, and then they wonder what happened. You did it. You violated a principle of increase. You disconnected with that which was inseminating your spirit and bringing increase. Are you still here? Lay your hand. Oh, God. See, you know what? Every once in a while, Elder Let, I put my foot in a thing in the spirit and I feel myself doing the Watusi in it. You know, you get into something that you know people are dealing with 
and you just answered something that people been praying about. It's like the Holy Ghost says, stay in there, son. Stay in there because somebody's coming out. Somebody's going to make a change. Somebody's going to make a shift. Lay your hand on your neighbor and say, and the increase is going to kick back in immediately. Are you still here? I said, are you still here? Now, here's what I want you to see. I want you to see this in your Bible. I want you to see this is not something to just casually pay attention to. This is not something that we just got to, oh, well, that's, that's, that's good. No! This is vital. Go to Genesis 12. Go, well, oh, you know what? Yeah. Oh, God. You know, go, go back to 1 Corinthians. I, I need to read the rest of that. I need to, I need to read the rest. So do, do, do not be deceived. Evil company corrupts good habits or evil communication corrupt, corrupts good habits. Look at this. Awake to righteousness. Stay awake to the righteousness that you have received and do not sin, do not miss the mark. Watch this. For some do not have the knowledge of God. If you are hanging out with people, taking information from people, taking advice from people who do not have the knowledge of God, you are paying attention to wisdom that is beneath you. It cannot elevate you. Still here? Genesis 12. Genesis 12, verse number 1. I need to hurry with this. Genesis 12, verse number 1. Now the Lord had said to Abram, Get out of your country and from your family and from your father's house to a land that I will show you. Now, once again, God wasn't telling Abram to get away from his family and his kinfolks because God didn't like Abram's family and his kinfolk. He was telling Abram to get away from his family and his kinfolks because God was getting ready to begin with Abram, teaching a new way of living. He was about to reveal himself and give him the principles of the covenant that everybody else was going to live by. Wow. And he knew that if Abram hung, hung out with his kinfolks, he would consistently be brought back into their way of doing things rather than walking in God's way of doing things. Are you still here? I said, are you still here? Man, Lord, you want me to go here? See, this is why there is, there is a period of time when you first come to Christ, where God isolates you. He pulls you away from all kinds of things and all kinds of people. And he doesn't want you hanging out with certain types of people. Now, once you get set, once you get established in the word, then some of those people he can let back around you because they will no longer influence you. You will now know enough and see this stuff working enough that you will influence them. Are you there? But there's a period oftentimes of isolation. And many people don't understand this. Sit down. They don't say, well, well why, is, why, is, why does God pull me away? It's not because he doesn't like the people. It's because he's going to influence those people once he gets you set. See, this is what Jesus said. He said, follow me. And what I'm going to do once you follow me is I'm going to make you a fisher of men. In other words, I'm going to make you better bait to catch other people. But you can't catch anybody as long as you don't know the principles yourself. I don't know who that was for. It wasn't in my notes. Watch this. Watch this. I will make you a great nation. I will bless you. I'll make your name great, and you shall be a blessing. I'm reading all the way to 10. You still here? And in you, uh, I will bless those who bless you. I'll, I'll curse him who curses you, 
and in you all the families of the earth shall be blessed. So Abram departed as the Lord had spoken to him, and Lot went with him. Everybody say, and Lot, and Lot went, went with him. With. Has God spoken to Lot? No. Who he speak to? Yeah. But Lot went, with. watch, but, but, and Lot went with him. And Abraham was 75 years old when he departed from Haran. Then Abram took Sarai, his wife, and Lot, his brother's son, and all their possessions that they had gathered, and the people whom they had acquired in Haran, and they departed to go to the land of Canaan, so they came to the land of Canaan. Abram passed through the land to the place of Shechem as far as the terebinth tree of Morah, and the Canaanites were there in the land. Then the Lord appeared to Abram and said, To your descendants I will give this land. And there he built an altar to the Lord who had appeared to him, and moved from there to the mountain east of Bethel, and pitched his tent with Bethel on the west and Ai on the east. There he built an altar to the Lord and called on the name of the Lord. So Abram journeyed, going on still toward the south. Now there was a famine in the land, and Abram went down to Egypt to dwell there, for the famine was severe in the land. Now here's what I want you to see. God has appeared to Abram. God talks to Abram. God speaks to Abram. Abram begins to develop a relationship with God where he's building altars, worshiping God, calling on the name of the Lord. Lot went with him. God hadn't spoken to Lot. Lot has built no altars. Lot has no word from God. Lot is just with Abe. He just decided, I I'm going with Abe. Now, Abraham is moving. Now there's a famine in the land. If you read the rest of that, I don't have time to read it all. Uh, there's a famine in the land. God gives Abraham instructions as to how to deal with that. And Abram comes out of the famine blessed. The worshiper who has a revelation of the remission of sin has no need to make an offering for sins. The worshiper who only understands that his sins are forgiven is constantly needing to make offerings. You should be bold. You should never come to God with your head down, wondering, will he hear me? Can I get in? Will I make it in? He said, no, 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 no. He said, once you know this, have boldness to enter into the holiest of all by the blood of Jesus. Lay your hand on your brother. Lay your hand on your sister. Tell them this is how it happens when increase is on your life. See, let me say this. Believers should never split up over divisions or contention. We should only split up when we're so blessed we can't hang out together in it.